My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a cardiologist in York. Today I want to talk to you about mast cell activation syndrome. So today I want to talk about a condition that's gaining recognition but is still often misunderstood. Mast cell activation syndrome or MCAS. This is one of those diagnoses that lives at the intersection of immunology, allergy, and neurology, and often affects people who have been struggling to get answers. What are mast cells? Let's start at the beginning. Mast cells are a type of immune cell found in nearly every tissue of the body. Think of them as guardians standing at the gate of your skin, lungs, gut, and blood vessels, ready to defend you against invaders. When they sense danger, they release chemical messengers like histamine, prostaglandins, tryptase, and leukotrienes. These cause the typical signs of an allergic reaction, itching, swelling, flushing, hives, wheezing, diarrhea, brain fog, even changes in blood pressure and heart rate. So what is MCAS? In mast cell activation syndrome, the mast cells become hypersensitive. So they start to release their chemical messengers inappropriately, not just when there's danger, but in response to normal things such as food, temperature changes, stress, hormones, or even smells. And the symptoms can vary wildly between people from mild to debilitating. In terms of the skin, there may be flushing, rashes, hives. In terms of the gut, there may be bloating, cramps, diarrhea, nausea. In terms of the heart, there may be palpitations, lightheadedness. And that's why it often overlaps with POTS. Uh, in the brain, yeah, there may be anxiety, headaches, brain fog. In the lungs, there may be breathlessness and wheezing. In the bladder, there may be frequency burning interstitial cystitis like symptoms. It's like the body is on constant high alert, overreacting to everything. How is it diagnosed? Well, this is the tricky part. There's no single perfect test. And I have to confess, I'm not a, like, a, like a proper expert in mast cell activation syndrome. Um, so, you know, my aim is just to give you some basic information about mast cell activation syndrome. And there are some experts around. So from my limited understanding, diagnosis is based on a combination of typical symptoms in two or more systems. So if you have skin reactions and gut reactions and if there is evidence of mast cell mediator release, so an elevated tryptase level or histamine or prostaglandins or leukotrienes, ideally measured during a flare. And if there is improvement with anti-mast cell medications. So those are the th three things, right? Involvement of two, two symptoms, elevated histamine, um, leukotrienes, tryptase and an improvement in symptoms with anti-mast cell medications. It's not always easy to confirm this diagnosis and many people are misdiagnosed with anxiety, IBS or unexplained dysautonomia before someone thinks of MCAS. How is it treated? MCAS isn't cured but it can be managed. The main strategies are try and avoid triggers such as heat, stress, high histamine foods, alcohol, non-steroidals. Number two, stabilize the mast cells. So there are two medications that we use. One is ketotifen, and I've done a video on that recently. And the second is sodium chromoglycate. These are called mast cell stabilizers. Three, block the mediators. So antihistamines, and with antihistamines, you want H1 blockade with things like cetirizine or fexofenadine and H2 blockade with famotidine or ranitidine. You can also use leukotriene blockers because leukotriene is something that mast cells produce and one of those is Montelukast. You can use low-dose naltrexone which modulates immune activity and you can support the autonomic nervous system since many patients have, with MCAS have overlapping POTS, EDS and ME slash CFS. 
Dietary adjustments are really important and a low histamine diet may help. In some cases, there may be some advanced therapies like omalizumab or uh, immunoblodulators, and these can be used. Who gets MCAS? Interestingly, MCAS is commonly seen in people who also have hypermobile EDS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, which is something that I see a lot of, chronic fatigue syndromes, mold illness, and long COVID. And we're beginning to see MCAS as a part of a wider dysautonomia, immune dysregulation spectrum, particularly in young women who have often been dismissed as just anxious for years. So if you're living with MCAS, I want to say this clearly, you're not imagining your symptoms, we're learning more every day, and there is help, and there is hope. It takes patience, curiosity, and often trial and error, but many patients do improve with a structured approach, tailored treatment, and a supportive care team. Mast cell activation syndrome reminds us that the immune system is not separate from the nervous system or the gut or the heart. It is a symphony and when one section goes off key, the whole system feels it. But with understanding, humility and compassion, the music can return. Thank you so much. Uh, I would love to hear your views. If you have suffered from mast cell activation syndrome, and have gotten better, then I would love for you to write and say, how did you get better? Because this is such a poorly understood condition that we all have to learn from each other. So once again, I would very much value your feedback. All the best, take care.